Hey y'all, welcome to Fruity Makers. I'm Amanda and today we are making a cheesy spaghetti. It's going to be yummy. We are doing turkey instead of chicken because I have more turkey canned at the moment than chicken. And so we're going to be using that. You will probably hear some background noise. Um, Sunshine is doing crafts at the table. I have my dishwasher going. It's been a crazy day, as you can tell with the hair. Um, but we are just going to roll on with this. We're going to head into the pantry in just a minute and grab some turkey and some um, pasta. We're doing a gluten-free pasta today. I got that in surplus when I got the tuna that I mentioned two videos ago. Before we get started, a little word about the cheese. I do not use anything freeze-dried at the moment. Um, I don't know if that will change in the future. Probably not. Um, but I also don't have cheese like in blocks and wax yet. I really want to learn how to do that um, properly and start waxing cheese to put in my pantry. That would be really super awesome. Um, in the really far off future, I want to have uh, my own dairy that will come in time. But for now, we are using cheese from the freezer. I did buy three cases of cheese earlier, um, kind of toward the end of last fall, right before winter set in. Um, so I got a case of mozzarella, a case of shredded cheddar, and a case of shredded like a blend. And so I have those three cases in the freezer and that is where we are getting our cheese for this video. So that didn't technically come from the pantry, but it did come from our storage because part of our storage is our freezer at the moment. Everything else is basically coming from the pantry. Um, the bell peppers we're using in this video came from the freezer. I grew those last summer and chopped them up and so I've still got plenty of those and the onion is fresh but we keep a surplus of that in our our um, pantry like where you saw the potatoes above that I have a rack where I keep onions and shallots and things like that so yeah we're gonna get started my water is just starting to come to a boil so I'm gonna go ahead and put my gluten-free pasta in I don't like big long pieces and so this is what my mom has always done and so this is what I have always done I'm just gonna pop that in here stir it around a little bit I did salt my water this is 12 ounces of spaghetti noodles. So I'm just gonna let this boil away. Um, the gluten-free has to boil a little bit longer than your typical, but while I'm waiting on this, I'm gonna get my veggies ready. Here I've already diced half an onion. I'm using the last of this bag of peppers. This was chopped up um, in the summertime. And so I'm just gonna pop this on my thing because I feel like they're in too big of pieces. It's partially frozen still. Um, and I'm just going to give this a rough chop because some of these pieces are pretty big. I don't know what I was thinking with that. Um, so I'm going to attempt to chop them a little bit smaller. I think this will do. And this was banana peppers, bell peppers, and I think a little bit of jalapeno if I remember correctly. I just drained my pasta in the sink and so that's where it's staying for now. I've got about a half a stick of butter here that I'm melting down. And I'm going to add in my vegetables from earlier. These do have some water in them, but that's just going to have to cook out. It's going to be okay. Don't trip out about it. After we let this cook for just a few minutes, we are going to make a roux with some gluten-free flour. I use Bob's Red Mill, and so we're going to throw that in in a few minutes. Gluten-free roux are a little more tricky than just a regular roux because you have to cook them much longer. The Bob's doesn't... Um, brown as fast. It can be a little bit tricky, but I'm going to bring you guys along and show you how I do it. So we're going to let this cook on about medium heat for just a few minutes, and then we'll throw in our flour. All right, y'all, it's only been about two minutes, but I think they're, they're cooked enough. They're going to finish cooking in the um, oven when we bake this in a few minutes. I'm going to throw in my bobs. I'm going to do about two heaping tablespoons. I don't get precious with measurements because, well, I just don't. That's not how I roll. Um, if you do, you may want to find a precise, I guess, recipe, but I feel like when you're cooking from scratch, you have to be able to feel your food, um, and you have to know what different things mean with your food. Like, um, I can tell if, there, if I need more, and that's not something I can easily explain. Um, but for now, I think this is going to be plenty of flour. I'm just going to let this cook. I'm stirring it up really well. And we're going to let this cook for, gosh, until the color is right. I don't know how to explain it other than that. Um, but I will keep you guys on here so you can see as the color changes some. And you don't want to leave this. This is not something you want to leave. If you scorch your flour, it's going to taste burnt. Your whole dish is going to be ruined. All right, it's been about four minutes. You can see that the color has changed slightly on the flour. Um, I'm not going to let it get too much darker. I'm going to go ahead and get um, some milk going in here. This is just an unsweetened almond milk. 
And I'm just putting a very little bit so I can scratch up what has stuck to the bottom a little bit. And I'm just going to stir this until it starts to get smooth. And then I'll add some more and I'll keep a cooking. And I'll add some more and keep a cooking, keep a stirring. Um, it does take a little while to make um, a sauce this way, but it's very worth it because we don't do cream ofs in our home. Okay, now it's starting to thicken up, so I'm going to add in some more milk. Okay, now I'm going to start adding some seasoning. So this is some pepper. A good amount of pepper. A wee bit of salt. Some garlic powder. A little bit of onion powder just because even though I have onions in it. I'm also really loving paprika lately. So I'm gonna throw some of that in there. And, ooh, stir it, stir it, stir it. I turned my heat back up a little bit. Get that mixed in. Add some more milk. I'm also going to go ahead and throw in the rest of the Rotel tomatoes that you guys saw um, from yesterday's video that I put in that soup. I had that in the fridge. We're just going to toss those in. Stir them in really well. The liquid from that is going to add to this as well. I may not need too much more milk. But I'm going to keep a cook in it. You can see it's kind of turning into a sauce now. It's not just a thick weird mess but it does take some patience with the gluten-free sometimes you'll think it's not getting thick at all and sometimes you'll think it's too thick and I mean it gets it gets crazy sometimes it'll be thick one minute and the next minute it feels like soup gluten-free flour is funny um, I think it's the rice flour in it that makes it so unusual but in the end it usually turns out there we go it smells great. Now I'm adding in about half of an 8 ounce pack, so about 4 ounces or so of a Mexican cheese blend. This is like a Monterey Jack and Cheddar blend. So I'm going to throw this in here, stir it around, and this is our cheese sauce. Once that melts, um, the cheese was still frozen slightly, so it's, you know, it's got to thaw and it's got to incorporate. But after that, we'll be ready to throw our pasta back in. All right, friends, my cheese sauce is about where I want it. It's a little bit loose, but my pasta is al dente, so it's going to soak up a lot of that extra liquid as it cooks. Throw that in there. We'll mix this up and pour it in a pan. All right, y'all, I almost forgot about my turkey, so I just popped a lid on that. I'm going to dump this in. Pre-cooking your uh, meat before you can it usually means that it doesn't stick. Um, this stuck just a little bit. I'm surprised. But normally, um, when I cook it first, it doesn't stick when I can it. Um, but anyway, I'm going to stir this in. Tell me that's not beautiful. That is going to be scrumptious. All right, y'all. I've just got a casserole dish here that I'm pouring it into. The handles are even hot. And I'm going to pop this in the oven at 350, covered in cheese. And it's going to have like a bubbly crust at the top, and it's going to be really, really yummy. If you're in a crunch for time, everything in this is cooked already, so you could um, just turn on the broiler if you're um, in a hurry, like on a weeknight or something. But this pan, I'm just going to spread everything out evenly. This cheddar is also um, slightly frozen, but that's not going to be a big deal when I put it in the oven. Yay, my dishwasher is done. Just in time for dinner. All right, we're gonna pop this in the oven until it gets melted and bubbly. Well, my pasta is in the oven. I've got some butter here in my skillet just to melt in. And I also have um, a can of green beans from the summertime. I canned these this past year. 
And I'm gonna open these and drain them. I do green beans different almost every time I make them. This is gonna pop when I throw it in there. But don't be alarmed. <laughs> They're gonna be scrumptious. I'm just sauteing these tonight. Um, sometimes I like to put in um, a shot of Worcestershire or um, even spicy brown mustard is good in these sometimes. But tonight I'm just going to keep it simple with some butter and salt and pepper. Well friends, as you can see it's already out of the oven and my family was very hungry. So they've already dug into this but I'm going to get myself a bowl now and try it. It smells really yummy in here. I'm using a bowl instead of a plate because, you know, in wintertime, sometimes that's just more comfortable to hold. Well, guys, I'm really looking forward to chomping down on my bowl here. It's going to be really yummy. But before I do, I want to thank each of you for stopping by and sharing some time with me here at Freedom Makers. I am very grateful for each of you, but I'm even more grateful for my food storage pantry. So it's just really great to be able to run in there and grab a few things and throw them together and we have dinner. It's delicious. It's inexpensive. It is a much... Um, more clean way to eat in my opinion. It's a much more inexpensive way because I can stock up on the things that we love and I can can what we have and when meat is on sale I can can that. It was really easy just to grab a can of turkey and throw it in this instead of having to thaw something from the freezer, cook it, chop it up, then put it in. This is a time saver. So if you're not canning meat, if you don't use canned meat, I would encourage you to try it. It is a super huge time saver for us and it has made this wonderful, delicious meal. I also want to thank you guys for joining me the last three days. If you missed the previous two days, we did a challenge from Wanda at Crazy Days where she challenged people to eat from their food storage for three solid days and we did that this week the last three days. So thank you guys so much for joining us on that journey. It was really fun. Um, this is kind of how we eat all the time though. So if you are not using your food storage, if you're not rotating, I hope we gave you a couple of new ideas in the last couple days. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks so much for stopping by guys. See you then. Bye.